and now we leave. Hello, everyone. I'm really happy to see you on our today's workshop. Today we will speak about how to make candidates reply and how to write better emails to candidates and encourage them to apply for your jobs. My name is Anastasia. I'm head of growth at Matcher. Before we start, please put plus if you actively hire uh, candidates and people nowadays in these uh, difficult times. So who is hiring now? Give me pluses in, in the chat box. <laughs> Actually, we are hiring at Matcher. Batman is hiring as well. Always. I'm like hiring for like me. Like I need someone to join Wayne Tech. <laughs> no one else? Okay. Okay, that's good. That's actually great. Uh, yeah, 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 to you, my, I'm really happy to see you. You always visit our workshops. Hi, Tim. Uh, that's great. Short rules as always. Uh, if you want to ask a question, please ask it in the ask a question field and we will cover all of them in the end of the presentation. Uh, if you would need help with sourcing or if you hire remote talent, especially remote tech talent, please contact us. You see the button, Matcher helps you find the best candidates, really can help you with sourcing and hiring remote tech talent, don't hesitate contacting us. Yeah, hello guys. And I'm happy to present our great guest speaker today, Mike Batman Cohen. Ba -bam! <laughs> Mike, a couple of words about you. How are you doing? Uh, I I'm 2020's version of good. Uh, I'm starting to see the market pick up again, which is awesome. Uh, so seeing some of the benefits from that, um, just getting out of conference season. So like super relieved to be able to sleep again and like eat and stuff. It'll be great. Mm -hmm. um, and super excited to do this. Uh, it, it's interesting on the recruiting agency side, people have this weird, uh, kind of perception that we're always competing with each other and like we can't be friends and stuff. Um, but like we do something very similar, Matcher yeah. and, and Wayne Tech. And like, I love working with you guys and supporting you. And so like, I, I really encourage the industry to realize there's plenty of business for everybody. We're all in this together. And if you help other people out, they'll help you out. Absolutely. Right? Let's, so just like, let's just support each other. Yeah, let's just support each other. Completely agree with that. Absolutely. So uh, tell us, uh, will you will you tell some insights today? What will be during today's workshop? Yeah, so today I'm going to be going over uh, a messaging presentation uh, that I put together actually originally for SOSU. Um, but I was on a side stage. Unfortunately, most people didn't get to see it. And it is research and uh, like historical data based. So anything I'm sharing is going to be backed by either a psych journal article or like three years worth of data I've collected. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, we know your sourcing power. Now I'm really interested in uh, looking to your email, email strategy, email template, and how you outreach the candidates. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, my two my two favorite things are like the sourcing Boolean side mm -hmm. and then messaging. And I've actually spent much more time on the messaging side in terms of like research and data and just own personal like love interest. What's your average reply rate? Uh, it depends per client. Uh, so far, I think we've sent out uh, just over 5,000 emails uh, in the last eight months. And we okay. have a 33.13% response rate. Pretty high, pretty high. It's like yeah. one of my best reply rates for marketing messages. 
actually. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's something we've worked very hard on uh, and are continuing to evolve and learn and, and grow. Mm -hmm. So I think we can start so Sweet. far. All right, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, Dima asked, where did I get the hat? Uh, I was in Florida with my wife and I saw like a like a Lego hat. It didn't have any of these on it, but I saw like the little Legos and I was like, that's so dumb. Who would ever buy that? And then I was like walking out and I was like, oh, I could do Lego superheroes. And then I was the person who bought it. Yeah. <laughs> You're awesome. You're absolutely awesome, Mike. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen. Um, Anastasia, I'm hearing an echo of me. And like, no, I hate my voice it. normally, which is really weird. I don't have any echo. Oh, oh you guys, please share. Because everybody it. else you, can yeah, hear. Yeah, yeah. Um, if the I'll sound deal is with okay. hearing myself. All right. Yeah, that's good. All right. I'm going to share my screen and get this rocking and rolling. <laughs> can confirm. No Echo, entire screen, this little baddie. Perfect. Can everybody still hear me? Yeah, awesome. Okay, guys, so I'm going to go through this uh, pretty quick. There's a bunch of stuff to kind of cover here. Um, if you've seen me present before, you know this already. Please, for the love of Pete, interrupt me um, and ask me questions. Uh, I do not like waiting until the end. I'm doing this for you guys, uh, not for me. I've, I've literally done this before. So just interrupt me, ask me whatever you want me to go over. I can go live. Um, uh, Matcher is really cool about that and they just let me kind of do whatever I want. So uh, thank you, Adrian and Anastasia. Um, so here we go, guys, uh, obviously to the inbox. So uh, this is there before we start. Uh, I don't know if Anastasia want me to go over this, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. Here's Adrian. He's the founder of Match HR. Why am I putting this in here? Uh, I mentioned this and I'm going to mention it again. Uh, we are quote unquote competitors. Um, and this guy has always opened up his like his heart and his his brain and his company uh, for me. And I'm trying to do the same. Uh, he's a great human. He gives back to the community. And so like if you're looking for talent, um, I definitely support uh, uh, Matcher and, and reaching out. They use great tech and they're just, they're great people all around. So me, uh, really quick. Um, oh my God, Kendra, hi. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, I haven't seen you actually since we got drinks after Higher Comp in New York. Uh, so this is me, this is where to find me. Um, I, I own a sourcing company uh, that does contract sourcing and we do it in a super unique way. Uh, it's deliverables instead of hourly. If you're interested and you need sourcing help, like just ping me. Um, I do training and I'm also an indoor cycling instructor. Uh, all of this energy and swearing uh, comes out in exercise uh, for me. So those are, uh, those are some fun tidbits. Um, in terms of an agenda, so we're going to go through this kind of deciphering um, the data piece. We're going to go through subject lines. So we're going to go through messaging, cover a little bit of the best practices and myths. Um, and then I'm going to show you a ton of examples, guys, like a ton of stuff that I've personally done at scale. And as opposed to me telling you, oh, this works, right? This is the best whatever. I'm going to show you. Um, I literally screenshotted it to show you guys the info. So this is one of my favorite quotes. Um, the, the name is, at least for me, really similar when I read it. So I always just attribute this to Wim. Um, I know it's not you, Wim, but like for the rest of my life, this quote basically comes from you. Um, so let's talk about the data we're going to be looking at. There's going to be two types. I mentioned this already, but one of them is going to be research data. So I've, uh, I've actually looked up purchased and read, I think probably somewhere between like nine and 12 uh, scientific journal articles um, just for this presentation. There are links in this presentation to those journal articles that I've already purchased. Um, thank you, Wim. Um, they are being shared with you guys uh, 
potentially uh, in that gray area between like morally acceptable and not. So like, be cool. But if you ever want to know like, hey, why is he referencing this? Or like, where is he getting this from? Um, uh, you can click and read the journal article. The other is the historical data and kind of what I've been doing uh, for the last three and a half years. And I'm going to show you that um, as well throughout the presentation. And I'll differentiate between the two so you know. Um, awesome. So let's get this rocking and rolling. Subject lines. So first thing I, I put, and this is, this is straightforward, but people don't think about it very often, which is, are you understanding your audience? Right. So do you know their common reason for leaving uh, RFLs reasons for leaving? Um, do you know their career trajectories and do you know where the industry is at? Right. Like, are you reaching out to hospitality folks and saying, hey, I hope you're doing well? Like they're probably not. Hospitality is getting destroyed right now. Right. Um, conversely, are you reaching out to folks in media and e-commerce and just like, hey, I know things are tough right now. They're not in that space they're actually overworked like crazy. The other piece is talking about common reasons for leaving. Uh, are you recruiting, let's say truck drivers? Uh, in your subject, it's not gonna help you to say, oh my gosh, we have the coolest new cabs and technology in our, in our trucks or whatever. That's not what drives them. More often than not, that industry is driven by compensation and the ability to not have to drive overnight. Right. So are you understanding fundamentally what the people that you're reaching out to look for? Next, understand the two core reasons psychologically why people open emails. Uh, if you're interested, this is what the links look like. Um, this is a link to the journal article that I, I cite right here. The two reasons. Number one is utility. Right. So somebody sends you something that you're like, oh, my gosh, that sounds awesome, right? Like um, free AI sourcing platform for life, right? I'm like, hmm, all righty, let me check that one out, right? Um, the other is curiosity, where you don't know, right? Based on the subject line, you're, you're like, hmm, right? Somebody sends me an email that was just like, read this article on Wayne Tech, my company. I'm, I'm opening that, right? I'm like, really? Someone wrote an article about me. I wonder how bad it is, right? So those are like the two reasons. I will tell you, curiosity typically wins. Um, people tend to be able to uh, predict how to write curious emails more than utility. What do I mean? You don't know what that person is looking for in their next job. You don't know why they're maybe unhappy in their current job. So being utilitarian is very difficult. Peaking curiosity more straightforward. We're all humans. We're all naturally curious. So personalization rules. I'm going to go through this quickly. Guys, I encourage you guys to go check out this journal article right here. Um, they have, as you'll see, a whole bunch of rules, like positive rules, negative rules, things you should do, things you shouldn't do. Um, I put like the ones that really stuck out to me on the page, um, but I think there's like 50 or something like that that they list out for good and uh, less less than good. So guys, give, give a read through these. I'm not gonna go through every one, um, but pay attention for this one on rule 13. Uh, subject line contains an organization name. It'll receive more attention. Um, and uh, a big one, if the subject line contains less than 50 characters, it gets more attention. That's 50 characters that include spaces, periods, emojis, you name it. Um, negative rules. Uh, so I really want you to check out rule number 15. Uh, don't start with an adjective. Great, awesome, cool, amazing. Do not start subject lines that way. It actually leaves a negative, more salesy impression on the person reading it. Um, Totally random, actually, is if you guys are doing any offense, these words, conference, seminar, webinar, have uh, drastically reduced impact uh, of your, your subject line and reduced the open rate severely. So first, hot tip. Guys, this, if you take nothing away for the subject lines, this is the thing that you should 100% take away. Use 
their company name as the subject line. So if I was reaching out to Anastasia to try and recruit her uh, for my company, don't worry, Adrian, I, I won't. Uh, but if I was, I my email to her would say, matcher. That's it. That's all it would say, just that one word, right? Um, that will typically get you across a, a long series of studies and, and mass volume, the best open rates. Their company name, but cleaned up, right? You don't want to reach out to Dean DaCosta and say, uh, hey, Dean, how are things going at Lockheed Martin Missile Defense Group? What? Right? That's obviously spammy, like you just plugged that in. No one would say that. You'd say, hey, how are things going at Lockheed or Lockheed Martin? That is what you actually want to use as your, uh, your subject. So I'm going to take a quick pause because people typically have questions around this. Do you guys have any questions about what I'm saying and what I mean? I'm going to show you in these next email and these next uh, screenshots why this works. Okay, awesome. Um, so guys, check this out. I literally screenshotted, this is from the last, like, uh, I think only the past year or so. Um, so a, bunch, uh, a few of these are from post COVID, a few of these are from pre COVID. Um, but I'm literally screenshotting this and I want to explain what you're looking at. So each blue and white section here is one email um, sequence, right? And I A, B test them always, like every single time. I've done this for three years. Um, and this one has this subject line. The white has this subject line. And what you'll notice is these are the number of people's emailed. And what we're looking at is the open rate. Okay. So what we're going to be comparing is their company name versus a different subject line. How many people did we send it and how many open? So this one, you can see hundred percent open rate for all 86 of these people. For this one, check this out, right? So we're reaching out to 100 people. This is not, I'm not reaching out to eight people and giving you guys like, oh, I have a 90% open rate. Like, yeah, dude, seven of the eight people opened your email. Congratulations, right? That's not enough data for me to make uh, great decisions, right? 100, 200 people, now you can start formatting um, some data, uh, some reliable data at scale. So check this out, guys. 69% open rate with their company name, only 50% with a FinTech shop with 59 million in funding, DevOps engineer. Why? This one's a little long, honestly. Ready? Company name versus any interest in a new recruiter role. 77 open, 75 open. Again, company wins. Company name versus global tech company, head of people. 50% versus 41%. Wim, I see your question. I'll answer in a sec. We're going to keep going. InfoSec manager role at the New York Times. That should be super sexy, right? 78% open rate. Their company name, 81%. Redbubble, marketing manager. That's a great company to work for in marketing. 73%. Their company name, 76%. You guys seeing a trend? I could, by the way, I could do this for the rest of the day, right? Global health tech company, senior comp manager, Company name, 76 for 66. FinTech shop, software engineering manager, company name, 76, 46. Here in the last year, so I just did this from the last year, uh, these are the two examples where the subject line we created beat out their company name. As you can see, it only lost by two percentage points here. Uh, the Series B FinTech shop needs a general manager really, really kind of sexy reach out for people, honestly. Um, so I get it. And this one I sent to people in Seoul, South Korea. And apparently I did not do uh, great research on uh, how to better communicate with people from South Korea. So I learned a valuable lesson because those open rates uh, and reply rates are garbage for us. Um, Wim asks the question, what am I using to track the mails? So I use uh, two different email automation tools. If I have to send a large blast very quickly uh, and I'm less concerned about personalization, which I rarely do, uh, I will use Interseller, uh, that is inter 
seller, I'll type it here, interseller.io. Uh, they do find email addresses. They have a great integration um, with LinkedIn. The other tool that I've been geeking out on lately is Lemlist. Um, and I know, uh, Adrian, I don't, you may have been actually the person to turn me on to Lemlist. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, but Lemlist tracks the same data. Um, and, uh, what it does is allow you the ability to actually use these modifiers, company, first name in the, in an image, right? So imagine I'm sending you a meme and your name is in the meme. No way are you not thinking that's hyper-personalized. Adrian, what about Loxo? So Loxo is what I use as my ATS and my outreach through that. So because of the unique way that Wayne Tech works, um, an ATS is very difficult for us to integrate because we're all sourcing side, not recruiting. Uh, when we do take on retained searches, um, we do use Loxo. And the reason we use Loxo for messaging is it's, it's the only platform I know of where you can create sequences of different mediums, meaning you can have your first two uh, outreaches be an email, and then your third outreach be a text message, your fourth outreach be an in-mail, your fifth outreach actually be a phone call where you leave them a voicemail through the system. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal for the way that we work typically on contract. It's not the number one place that we go simply because of our process. Uh, the tool is my number one tool. Uh, question, how do I research my own country, my own market in terms of subject line, just a B testing or any other factors, uh, to study. So Nafar, uh, obviously great question. Um, so I typically would look, uh, for country specific communication techniques. Um, so I was planning a trip to India a few years ago. I didn't wind up going, uh, and I literally bought a little guide on like how to communicate. Um, so you're not like offensive, right? Cause I'm naturally pretty offensive and there's, there's that, uh, gap in language, um, right. That I'm sure we've all experienced when speaking to people from different countries that there are subtle nuances that can make you go, Oh, that, Oh, that sounded uncomfortable when you said that. And I know you didn't mean it. So, uh, I highly encourage you, you seeing, uh, if there's any data out there for that, um, talk to a recruiter who's local in that space. Right. Adrian's putting on an awesome event, uh, a matcher, right? Like there's a bunch of people from all over the world here right now. Just reach out to them. See, see what works for them. Right. Run your uh, run your idea by them. Uh, another thing. And we're trying to make this um, uh, a, a universal place for all HR or for all recruiters and TA and sourcers to go. Uh, if you look, I just put an invite to our discord channel. Discord's a messaging app. Uh, it's like Slack, but like a billion times better. Uh, it's open, it's free, um, and you can connect with anybody. You don't have to be like in a particular company. So we actually created a Discord uh, server for all of TA. And we're inviting everybody in the world to come in, hang out with us, um, spitball, throw out ideas. We're going to be doing some live sourcing. So stuff like that's going to be a great way um, to kind of get those questions answered. Um, Olena, Mike, how do I segment people into different email campaigns? Um, so I'm a big fan of using just CSVs. So, uh, if I'm sourcing on the blue devil, uh, which is LinkedIn, uh, if I'm sourcing there, uh, I will typically, uh, I hope no one from LinkedIn is on here. Uh, I will typically use a scraper of some kind, uh, to extract the data from LinkedIn and put it into a CSV using any of the other platforms, right? Amazing hiring, uh, seek out, hire tool, engage talent, lock. So, et cetera, you can just export them into a CSV. And that's how I actually clean the data up. So if you look here, right, when I say clean your data, check this out, like, um, uh, adventure technologies, right? You'd never put in the subject line adventure technologies, right? Like don't yell at people, clean it up. You want to say adventure. Same thing with, you'd never say accommodations plus international, you'd say API, right? Hey, how are things going at UBS wealth management? What? Just UBS, right? So I pull them all into a CSV and then I use Google Sheets 
personally uh, to clean up all the data. And then you can load them in to either Lemlist or Intercellar or Loxo via that. Uh, question, when I do email blasts, do you and how do you go through the candidates to determine which are good possibilities and which shouldn't hear from you? Martha, great question. That's going to be a little bit of a different conversation for this presentation. Um, I'm happy if you want to reach out to me. Uh, we can set up some time and I can kind of show you my process for that. Um, what I Again, the way I work is a little unique, so there may be some things to take away and, and some things that may not be relevant, but I'm always happy to connect offline about that. Um, question, how do you think calling people will work on EU market? Um, have not uh, had a positive experience. So uh, if you're referring to calling like on the telephone, I have no idea. I'm a millennial and I hate talking on the phone. Um, if you're referring to like literally like pinging somebody uh, via email, what I've shown you, I've done globally, right? Uh, I've done in Germany, I've done in the United Arab Emirate, I've done in Oman, Australia, um, all of North America, uh, and it it tends to follow the same guidelines with the only difference being kind of what Nafar asked earlier, the difference, the, the intricacies of each language. Um, does the company in the subject line work in the blue devil also? No, no, it doesn't because LinkedIn Recruiter is the worst tool ever. Um, great platform, terrible tool, uh, terrible company. Uh, they're literally ruining our industry. Uh, sorry, <clears throat> the answer to your question is no, there is no company quote unquote modifier in LinkedIn Recruiter because they're awful. Uh, last question here, what are my thoughts about sending an email to a candidate uh, current work email address? I avoid it like the plague. I, I, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, it depends on what type of role and what type of company. But if you're ever reaching out to a company that has really strong IT and security practices, right? So like finance, fintech, even, even can be like software engineering at larger companies, do not do it because you know IT monitors all inbound. You have to be super mindful about that. Um, Yael, you asked, uh, does the headline only their company name? Yes only their company name. That is the only thing that I send it to, right? Uh, boom, 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 boom. Uh, Wim, we will probably have company modifiers in 2030. Uh, I am hoping that LinkedIn Recruiter is dead in 2030, so I hope that you're wrong. Uh, I'm really working hard to make that happen. So uh, I'm gonna keep going. Guys, again, keep giving me your, your questions. They're awesome. Uh, subject lines. Keep them to less than 37 characters, okay? So here's why. Uh, oh, I should probably not click the link. So here is why, and I hate that that happens. Boop. Okay, so most people are checking uh, emails on their phone, right? This is a study where 1.09 billion opens were tracked, right? And take a look at what this breakdown actually looks like. Apple iPhone is 28%, okay? It's a quarter of the emails you send are open on the phone. And here's a fun fact. Your phone, if set with a normal size font, mine is a little bit larger because I'm trying to protect my eyeballs, um, can only hold 41 characters going across, okay? This is the uh, native mail uh, application on an iPhone, uh, iPhone X. Uh, this is the Gmail application on an iPhone X, okay? So they only hold 41 characters before they cut your message off and give you this dot, 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 okay? So if it's 41 characters, why then am I saying 37 or less? Because when you send your second email, it's going to say R E colon space. So 37 plus four, our E colon space is 41. As a reference point, this right here is 36 characters. So that's how much space you have to work with between spaces, numbers, letters. I'm going to go through this quickly. This is a really in-depth study um, uh, regarding subject line length. Guys, Here's, here's the bottom of the line. Number two here kind of says everything. Keep the subject line as short as possible to convey the message. If you want to read the whole journal article, it is super dry, um, but it is right here. 
Um, Terry asked, do I ever use RE colon in the subject line? Uh, no, for the love of God, don't do that. That is a shitty thing to do. Um, if you haven't sent them an email already, I just got on somebody about this um, who said, hey, just following up from a previous conversation. And I was like, what previous conversation? Right. And they just went like right into their sales pitch. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not even reading that. What previous conversation? Right. You put an RE colon in the email. There is no email prior to that. So like, did you do that in an attempt to trick me to open the email? In which case, hard pass. So please do not do that unless it's your second email. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, kind of what that looks like in a second. So uh, so here's a fun one. Uh, using numbers in the subject line. Here's two articles that will tell you you should do it. Here's two articles to tell you that you don't do it. Um, this is one of those weird myths that hasn't been proven. Um, as you can see, when I use numbers, it tends to give a lower open rate, so I don't use it. Asking a question in a subject line, good or bad. Here's a scientific journal article that says you should do this. Here's a Yesware article um, who's like a foremost uh, studier of of this, their company produces great studies, who says, don't do it. So in a world where uh, there's a do and a don't, I will always not do it because I'd rather be safe than sorry. And the last are spam words. Um, Matcher says RE colon equals spam folder. No, not if it's actually an RE colon. So when I send out my second, third, and fourth emails through these platforms, Interseller and Lemlist and Loxo, um, it will auto append the RE colon and it will send it in the thread, right? I actually want the person to see the prior email that I sent. Um, so for that, it won't. If you're actually writing that as part of your email is like a quirky way to get someone to open it. I'm not positive about the spam folder, but I, it, it would make sense to me. Um, so guys, check this out. Spam words. Here is a list of the top 100 email spam trigger words. Oh, here's a list of uh, actually, this is a good list of, of the spam trigger words. Oh, no, wait, no, 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 guys. This is the ultimate list of spam trigger words or, is, or wait, are these the ones to avoid? Oh, no, maybe, maybe these ones are the, wait, wait. Oh, no, 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 guys, these are 455 of them. Oh, these are probably the best ones. So, guys, uh, they're all bullshit and people are kind of guessing. Um, Google is never going to release what words they have and the weight of those words in their spam filters to the public ever. You're never going to know that information. And these are a bunch of people who have either done some testing on their own or uh, have read a bunch of stuff about it. Like the bottom line of spam words and phrases look at the subject and tell yourself, would I open this? Or when I read this, would I think that someone's trying to sell me something or get me to do something? If so, don't do that thing. All right, uh, I'm gonna take a quick pause because that is everything on subject lines. Um, Dima, how I send emails from Loxo, um, separate emails with the same. Uh, yes, Loxo does have the ability to send in threads still. Uh, I can connect with you offline if you want about that, Dima, to show you. Um, I can't copy all these links in time. Oh, I I can. Oh, nice. Well done. Yeah. Don't. It's, it's all mixed information, too. The spam words are actually different on a bunch of those pages. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, I'm going to give it 10 seconds, and I'm literally going to grab a quick uh, a drink of, of seltzer and say, hey, do you guys have any other questions on subject lines? Okay, fantastic. Um, we're gonna get into the body of the message now. Um, and this is this is where we're obviously gonna spend the meat and the potatoes of the presentation, because this is where um, you're really gonna figure out not the open rate, but your reply rate. So first thing, and we're gonna talk about this in like three different ways because it's so important. Message people in your voice, okay? Um, so, uh, hi Ramil. Um, so guys, 
This is a journal article that literally says the linguistics of email. I'm going to reference this probably two or three times talking about how do you write your emails so they sound um, uh, like you, right? How do they sound the most natural? So check this out. Format, if you read that, the linguistic component is a mix of writing and speech, right? Ready for this? The lexicon. So so some of like the more subtle intricacies of things like um, using conjunctions like it's, that's, don't, can't, it's actually predominantly speech, right? If if Wim, uh, yeah, hell hydrate is right, dude. Uh, if if I wanted to, to reach out to Wim and say, hey, um, you know, would you want to go grab a drink with me? I, I wouldn't say something like, um, hey, Wim, how are you doing, right? I'd say, how are you doing, right? So keep that in mind. You want to make sure that you're writing in a way that is translated or translatable to how you speak. Uh, ooh, Preeti, great question. Uh, it's on subject lines. So if you're sourcing for a full-time role and you're reaching out to freelancers, how do I get them interested? Uh, so there's a few different ways. So freelancers, I can typically switch up their quote unquote company name um, to your freelancing gigs, right? Um, all lowercase, right? Just your freelancing gigs. So people be like, well, what about my freelancing gigs, right? You email me and it says Wayne Tech. I'm like, what about Wayne Tech, right? So uh, that would be one way to do it. Uh, the other is asking the question or or posing the question, not in question format, in the subject of like freelance versus full time, right? And then just seeing if that intrigues them. If it doesn't intrigue them, they're not going to open it. And then you're going to avoid having to deal with someone who doesn't want a full time role anyway. I hope that that helps. Uh, so really big one, guys. There's two different studies here. Uh, this is actually a book written, you know, twenty something years ago. This is a study from twenty something years ago. Um, and believe it or not, they were saying this back then. It's important that when you communicate, that you're communicating in a natural way. Um, Nafar, sorry, you asked. No change of the subject line through the whole sequence. No. Absolutely not. You want them to know you were messaging them multiple times, right? You don't want to be one of the recruiters who's like, oh, I tried you already. And like, it's like, did you, right? Because if I'm receiving that, I'm like, I don't remember getting an email from you. And now I have to go check my email, make sure that you actually did email me, see what you emailed me about, and then get to your email. I'm like, eh, it's not here. I don't believe you. Next. So guys, a great way to make sure that you're emailing in a way that is genuine for you read your emails out loud, okay? Not like this. In much the same way, seasoned email users seem to be increasing relaxed about that. No, no, no. Actually out loud, right? Uh, I know most of you are working from home, so people aren't going to judge you for talking to yourself. But like literally say, in much the same way, seasoned email users seem to be increasingly relaxed about the technological limitations of the medium. The way that I'm reading that, I can very clearly tell that's not written in my voice. That's not how I talk. You guys will do the same thing. If you find yourself stumbling a little bit or like pausing or, or that's not written in your voice, delete it and just write it the way that you speak. Uh, Nafar, you said a talk that says break up mail. Yeah, so here's the deal. Uh, you're going to hear con uh, conflicting information in my talk versus other people's talks. My, my uh, theory on this has always been the same. If you can provide me data as to why I am wrong, I will change my presentation in a heartbeat. But someone saying I've done this and this works, cool. Show me the sample size. I want to see it. Right. Um, if if you can't show me that you've reached out to a thousand people or five hundred people, and that's been the case, I don't give a shit about your fifty-person email sequence you sent. Where this is a fact, I'm like, great. It was fifty emails, right? We're we're sending fifty emails a week. So so is that a viable test? No. Show me the data on what these other people are saying, and ask them the same thing. Right. Whenever I read one of these articles, I'm like, these are the best subject lines. I'm like, yeah. Where are you getting your data? Show me, like, show me the source of your data, 
right? Is it is do you have do you have years of of history on that? Great, show me. Or do you have journal articles that you've read that are science based? Great, show me. I I, I want to believe you, but like you telling me it's the case, it's bullshit. It's the reason why I'm not just telling you. I'm literally showing you. You ready? Here we go right now. So if you look, first off, this is my email sequence. We are reaching out to a total of 92 people in this sequence, just this one. And what you're gonna see is a few things here. Uh, on the left side of the screen is an email written in, oh, excuse me, we're reaching out to 200 people. I'm reaching out to 92, he's reaching out to 93. So it's a 200 person study. This is coming from the same email address and it's about the same role. We just took the number of candidates, divided it in half. I wrote messaging and he wrote messaging. I'm not gonna disclose his name, um, so that we could compare whose emails were better. This is written in my voice. This is written in his interpretation of what an email should sound like, okay? So take a look, first email, 61% open, 11% response. He had a similar open rate, but a 5% response rate. Next one, again, written in my style, super down to earth, my language, his look in that like fun professional speak. 9% response rate, 2%. 11%, 1%. 2%, 2 fourth email. Uh, I think mine was probably a little bit long if I had to guess. Overall, guys, uh, this one was in my voice, 30.5%. This was in his professional voice, 9.8%. And if you're looking, well, how many people did you send it to? 204, or excuse me, 95 and 102. So 107 total is how many we messaged. And just for the record, 0% unsubscribe rates on both of these. So if you're thinking, mm, that's too many emails, it's not. Next. Use humor. Why do I use memes and GIFs and try to be funny? Uh, Angela, uh, Maya Angelou, sorry, um, had that really famous quote uh, about people will not remember what you did for them, but instead how you made them uh, feel. So guys, humor is paramount if you want to impact someone who otherwise would be reading and just trashing recruiter emails. So. What is my proof? Well, first off, here's the scientific journal article. If you wanna read, I think the sentence is like right here, right? Um, and humor applied conscientiously. Um, so guys, the uh, emotions are the number one catalyst for action, for behavior, right? Um, if you can emotionally impact someone, that is the greatest chance you have to create action. And so I'll ask you, what is the most powerful emotion to elicit action, you think? If you're saying humor, you're wrong. It's actually fear. But number two is humor, which is pretty good. Uh, and you shouldn't use fear, right? So the number two most powerful emotion to uh, get people to do something is humor. If you see someone genuinely laugh, you tell, you tell them something very funny and they laugh, they chuckle, and you were to say, hey, did you enjoy that just now? Was that pleasant for you? They're going to look at you like an absolute freaking weirdo. Of course they enjoyed it. They laughed. Who doesn't like that, right? It's universal. If you're a CFO, if you're a salesperson, a technologist, a CPA, a recruiter, an owner of a company, it doesn't matter. Everybody likes laughing at funny things. It's a thing we have in common as humans across every culture. So body of the message, uh, using images, memes, and GIFs, because some people want to know like, yeah, I don't know if I feel comfortable doing that, if that's professional. First off, stop saying that. Uh, it's it's 2020. That, that phrase died like eight years ago. Uh, here's an actual study done by Marketing Success Factors. Here it is at Kensington at Kingston University. Ready for this? Higher response rate correlate with more images. The following hypotheses are supported. Also, response rate is inversely related to the length of the email. Keep that in mind, all right? Um, I'm not saying load your email with a bunch of images and memes, but I am saying that 
they do help, right? You do want to put them in, in at least one of your emails um, to see if you can generate interest from your, your visual readers or people who really appreciate you know, the humor and things. Um, I'm sorry, I'm missing questions here. Um, how about different subject lines in a thread? Uh, I mean, you could, but why? I'd rather let people know I'm reaching out multiple times. I don't, I don't want it to appear any other way other than what it is. Do you know what I mean? Um, I, I want them to know, hey, I'm reaching out to you four or five times, right? Um, and that way people can appreciate the fact that like, I actually have follow through. I'm not just like sending, you know, blasts of 500 emails out to people and praying they respond back. Um, I, I do not suggest that, but just like everything else, test it. Over the course of the next month or two, send it to, to 500 different people. And in half of them, change the subject line. In half of them, don't. And see what your open rates look like and, and your response rates. Uh, for subject lines to freelancers, I say write it in all lowercase. Yes, so it sounds conversational in sentence. So if you're if you're saying like, hey, how are things going uh, with your, you know, or at your freelancing gigs? It's not like at capital Y your capital F freelancing capital G gigs, right? It's not how you how you type it. You just say like at your freelancing gigs. So use color in emails, guys. Big preference here. So or, or big a uh, big warning here. Do not change the color of your font. Do not change the color of your font. Do not change the color of your background or anything like that. Your links, however, should be a color of some kind. Um, someone suggested to me recently using a different color blue, maybe, for your links to see if that works. We're testing that right now. I don't have an answer yet, but we always make sure our links are in a different color. We also make sure that our signatures have color in them. Right, a, a photo of us, or um, when you're sharing your your LinkedIn or your Twitter or your Facebook URLs, I embed them in the logo of that platform. Right, so I'll take the Twitter logo and put that under my my signature, and if you click it, it takes you to my Twitter account. Um, the other last thing to be mindful uh, mindful of is uh, the colors in the images you choose matter. As an example, if you look at the background of this slide, there is nothing like appealing drawing you into that background, right? It's not a color that like evokes a strong emotion, right? Bright red, bright yellow typically evoke a very rushed feeling. You want to avoid that. If you don't believe me, take a look at the major comp tech companies out there right now. Ready? What color is Facebook's logo? What color is LinkedIn's logo? What color is Twitter's logo? It's not a coincidence, guys. All right. Right, check it out. Bright yellow background. Warning. You're like, oh, what? Like what? Tell me. Like, yikes. Okay. So looks matter. Not your looks. You are all beautiful, perfect snowflakes. Um, the actual looks of your emails matter. Right. Um, so as you can see, red background, yellow writing, it's not comfortable. That much of that bright color is just not comfortable on your eyes. Um, why did I put it on this page? Solely to prove a point. Um, so guys, no paragraphs. Um, what color is Reddit? Reddit's uh, changed. They're now black and white. Um, they used to be orange, but they've, I think they've changed that now. Um, you can check on your, your mobile app to validate for me on that. Uh, YouTube is red, but it's because they started with that play button, which is where it all came from, their red logo, which is like the play uh, button that, that it, it gets embedded on videos, which is what they were mocking. Um, but good questions. Um, so guys, no paragraphs. Get rid of that shit. One to two sentences per section, and it's easier to read. Instagram is not blue. It's actually a light pink. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but again, it's not a bright red. It's not a bright yellow. It's, it's none of these like bright colors. They don't do well. Um, so uh, what do I mean when I say no paragraphs? So check this out. Give this just a quick read. You don't have to read everything. Just quick scan. And then give this a quick scan. 
Give this a quick scan. And give this a quick scan. Guys, which of these is better, right? Batman or Superman, right? Which one is a little bit easier to deal with, Batman or Superman? It's Batman, obviously. It's always Batman. The answer is always Batman. Um, but guys, check it out. These emails say the exact same thing. This is unpleasant. It's super hard to scan. Your eyes have to go real far left and right. Um, this is super easy, right? You just pull your things out of each sentence you want. Great, move on. So no paragraphs, right? Uh, the other piece with no paragraphs is no TLDR. So TLDR, too long, didn't read. So uh, this is a text message from my mom. Whenever I get a text message from my mom, I always go, ugh, right? I don't want to scroll down to read your message, right? Um, that's never a thing in any format I want to do. LinkedIn, Facebook Messenger, email, text message. If I have to scroll down to read your message, I'm out. I just like my brain can't handle it. I've got ADHD. I don't want to do that. A thing to keep in mind, millennials and Gen Z treat emails basically as professional text messages, right? We read them the same way. So don't send me this long crap. Oh my God, I'm going to stop clicking the links, I promise. I actually don't promise. There's a probable chance I'll wind up clicking another link. But check this out. Three sections is the ideal number, and you want to make them really short sections, just like I just showed you. Do not send a TLDR. No one wants to read it. If you send me an email like that, I literally respond, sorry, TL semicolon DR. Too long, didn't read. Uh, my mom will not call me Batman. Also, funny enough, I actually sent this text message to her and said, hey, can you send this to me, please? And she said, no, I'm not going to copy that and send that to you. I said, please, it would really do me a favor. I'm using it for some research. She said, fine. And then she said, what research? And I said, ha, I'm using it in a presentation I'm going to show to thousands of people around the world. Enjoy that. She laughed and thought I was joking. So uh, how many messages do you send? It's actually more than you think, guys. Um, according to this study uh, with a whole bunch of email statistics, four to seven emails per candidate is the ideal number. And having less than 200 people in that group, in that campaign, is the ideal number. Cadence. So this I got from a journal article. This I got from three years of testing. My cadence is literally an email on day one, an email the next day, an email two days later, an email two days later, and an email one day later. Five emails, seven days. Right now, a bunch of you are asking this question in some format. Isn't that too much? Like that, that sounds like spamming. That sounds like way too many messages. Well, let's dive in a little, shall we? This is a screenshot of actual statistics from just this year, right? So this is even during COVID, okay? This is dealing with the New York Times, a client of mine. Look at this, this number down here on the bottom right. This was after, this was at, I think, June when I took this screenshot initially, uh, or May. Um, so in about five or six, uh, in six months, we sent out on their behalf 3,440 messages, okay? So if you're thinking of unsubscribe rates, right? People saying, don't email me again. This is annoying. You shouldn't do this, whatever it is, right? I'll ask quick and I want, I'm interested to see in the chat how many unsubscribes reasonably, right? It's 3,440 candidates. That's not messages. So each one of them gets up to five emails if they don't respond. So it could be up to 15,000 emails. How many unsubscribes? Type, type what you think into the chat. Nobody. 
250. Any other guesses? I need two more guesses. Yeah. Marvin six, you are the kindest, sweetest man. Anybody else? 1000. Love you guys. You ready for this? Actual statistics here. 10. 10 emails are unsubscribed out of 3,440. Okay. Here they are. Here's their reasons, right? Not a great personality just means that they were super unpleasant in their response. DNC is do not contact, jerk response. This person, because it was about New York Times, uh, sent me to a tweet where he burned the New York Times and apparently hates them. So like, eh, that didn't work very well, right? So guys, uh, Anna, yeah, you Price is Right rules. Anna, you are uh, you are the winner. Uh, Anastasia will send you a free high five. Um, so guys, ready? 0.2% unsubscribe, okay? That means I have to send 500 emails to get an unsubscribe. Okay, so isn't that too many? No. Do you want to know how I know? I just showed you. If you don't believe me, here's one that we were sending. So this is, uh, the client was Business Insider, but we were actually working for another recruiting agency, right? Because we do sourcing and, and messaging for other agencies also. So we had an, a recruiting agency email address, okay? Important to note that we sent out a total of, where are my messages? 497 emails from a recruiting agency email address. And one of the roles was a sales role who were just like notoriously awful humans by and large. Ready? I think it's 11 unsubscribes, which is a 2.2% unsubscribe rate. This was our highest in the last year. I didn't want to BS you and just show you something awesome. This was our highest unsubscribe rate. 11, 11 out of 500, okay? It works, guys. It's not too much, okay? Last pieces here, best practices. Um, I actually tell people in the email, hey, if I don't hear back in a couple of days, I'll follow up again. Yeah, right? Because like, then they know you're going to email them again. And if they don't want that email for whatever reason, they're going to respond, right? My goal isn't to sell people in the email, my goal is to get a response. So I want to I want to repeat that. The only reason to send an email as a recruiter is to get a response. Okay? It's not to sell them on the job, it's not to get them interested in the company, it's not to it does if you told me that if I send this person a picture of a cat riding a skateboard that they're going to respond to me. I'm going to send them a cat on a skateboard. Okay. I have a question. Uh, is my data mostly from the States? Uh, no, um, it is not. It is not only from the States. It is from uh, Germany. It is from South Korea and it is from Australia and the US, uh, the ones I've shown you guys so far. Um, the New York Times one uh, and Business Insider. Yeah, those are from the US. Um, if you're interested, I, I guess I could pull up the ones I did in, in Germany and Australia and, and show you guys the, the rates on those also. They're very similar. Uh, Australia actually had almost a 0% unsubscribe. They're super awesome humans. Um, Dima, do I have an unsubscribe link? Yes. Uh, I included my email uh, campaign tools. Uh, you can just click to have it included at the bottom. I actually don't know off the top of my head if it's smaller than other texts, but I do include it. it. Legally, you're supposed to do that. And I, I despite my uh, rambunctious attitude, I do try to follow the law whenever I can. So last piece, guys, um, the most important thing you can do is not take my word for it and test it, right? I'm still just another guy trying to give you details of stuff that does and doesn't work. Yes, it's based off of tangible data that you can read yourself, but I'm still very fallible. I make mistakes all the time, um, and people constantly find better ways of doing things that I do. It's great. I love that. Test it for yourself. See what works, right? You'll find maybe things work differently uh, in your part of the world or for your type of roles or for specific types of roles, right? 
great. Test it. Let us know. Um, lastly, uh, being yourself, right? Haters gonna hate. Uh, if you've seen me present, you may have uh, heard this one already. Um, but uh, when we're talking about being ourselves, um, one of the one of the stories I tell, and this is a true story, is about my sister, uh, who's one of my best friends. I love her to pieces. Um, she worked at uh, New York Life, uh, which is a gigantic, multi, multi, multi billion dollar life insurance company as a financial analyst for nine years, okay? And so uh, super bright, like two degrees in four years type of a deal, like, uh, excuse me, three degrees in four years, like just one of those, just awesome, right? Um, and she approached me after nine years there and said, hey, I'm thinking about leaving, would you help me? And I was like, uh, what? yeah, yeah. Like this is the one time in your life I can actually help you. Yes, yeah, sign me up. Right. And so I said, you're going to find um, job descriptions for companies. I'm going to find the hiring manager and someone really high up in recruiting. I'm going to get their work and personal emails. And then you're going to write a super like customized, awesome personal email to them. And we're going to email them directly. OK, so the very first job she finds is a role for a strategic manager in finance for supply chain management at Bed Bath & Beyond, an e-commerce company. And so I, I did good, good recruiter, right? And I was like, hey, um, so this seems slightly outside of the scope of, you know, a financial analyst in life insurance uh, role. And her response was, I think I'd be really good at it and enjoy it. I'm like, well, you're my sister. I love you. I want to support you. Let's do it. So I got uh, the the folks' uh, names and emails, and said, "Great, Lauren, write me an email uh, to these to these folks, right? So we can intro you." And she said, literally, responds back, "Here it is." And it said, "Dear hiring manager, I found your job description on LinkedIn and believe that based on the job description and my role at the new at New York Life, that I would be an excellent fit for this role." My skills line up in the areas of, uh, I was like, holy shit. I was like, Lauren, this is awful. I was like, you know that if you used this, you could literally take out Bed Bath & Beyond, plug in any company name and still use it. And she's like, yeah. I was like, no, no. I was like, hey, why do you, wanna, why do you want to work there? Why do you want this job? She said, well, I believe based on my skill set, I'd be an excellent. I was like, no, no, cut the shit. I was like, stop that shit. I was like, you're my sister. Why do you want to work there? She's like, oh, oh, uh, I have three kids. We shop there all the time. Um, I, you know, I read an article. They're doing cool stuff to compete with Amazon um, in supply chain. And I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. Write that down, right? Send that. And she's like, I... I am not going to reach out to some VP at Bed Bath & Beyond telling them that I have three kids and shop at their store. And I was like, well, do you not have three kids anymore? I was like, well, like one of them's my godson. Like, like, please tell me that you still have three kids, right? And so she pushed back on it. And lo and behold, I finally said, hey, I need you to trust me on this. Okay, I need you to just do it. And she did. Super uncomfortable for her. She sent it out. But guys... Lawrence, the manager of strategic finance at Bed Bath & Beyond. And the only reason they interviewed her, the manager told her directly, was because of her email. Her resume did not line up, right? Literally, look at this. You can read it. Senior associate literally analyzing uh, work site insurance to a manager of strategic finance dealing with supply chain. Quick caveat to this. She's not at Bed Bath & Beyond anymore. She got a new job three weeks ago um, with a company called Crook & Marker that makes awesome uh, alcoholic beverages. So like, I'm super glad. Um, but guys, it actually works. So uh, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me. Here's, uh, you guys can probably see a trend on the Batman recruiter thing uh, and figure out, you know, where to get me. Um, it's the same on Instagram, obviously. Um, if not, I'm out.
And I'm going to post a link one more time um, to our Discord channel if you guys all want to join and come and hang out and chat with people from around the world. I'm not, because apparently I also already sent that. Uh, so great. Uh, I'm going to end my screen share here. And I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mike. It was so awesome. I just couldn't stop listening to you. It was Thank really you. interesting, really informative. And it's great that everything is based on facts. Um, probably I will change some email strategy in my marketing emails as well. I will share the recording and your slides with the audience and all the links that you have shared in our Facebook group. Yes. Uh, I'm sure everybody just enjoyed, just enjoyed your presentation today. Thank you so right. much. Thank we you will see and I next hope to Thursday. be in touch. Yeah. We will see each other next Thursday, same time. Stay tuned. And Mike, you're super great. You're a Batman. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. See you guys. Bye-bye. And have a nice day. Have a nice evening. See you.